this is Pedestrian Wanderlust. We are here at La Plaza Cultural, our Armando Perez. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're here with Natalia. We just did a Pedestrian Wanderlust through this lovely park, this lovely garden. How was that for you? It was pretty amazing. Um, sweating in about five seconds, but it's definitely a new way to interact with this garden. Yeah. So you've been here before? <laughs> I've been here one time before. Um, when I was doing just kind of a tour of all of the East Village gardens. Okay, and what made you want to dance in this spot? That willow tree. That willow tree. Can we get <laughs> the willow tree real quick? That's a pretty epic willow tree. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with dance and how you got started? Oh, of course. So uh, I'm what they might call a late bloomer. Um, I began dancing at about 20, 21 years of age in college. So I went into college as an architect and as a uh, track and field runner. I got injured in track and field and as I was healing, I ended up just going into some cultural shows with some friends. So I was in the Korean Dance Festival, I was in the African uh, American Dance Festival, and the Chinese New Year Dance Festival, and then I ended up doing a play, and it was Midsummer Night's Dream, which is my absolute favorite, and I was a fairy. It turned into basically a dance role and it was choreographed by the resident choreographer uh -huh. of the school um, and so he invited me to join his company he was really big on just inviting movers to join and you go on the sidelines and you try to learn everything you can and maybe perhaps you'll be in a show um, so I ended up kind of going underneath his wing and taking a lot of dance classes and absolutely falling in love with it it has most of the elements of architecture without a computer that you have to like clack on all day. Yeah. So that's why I think I fell in love with dance. Instead. That's awesome. Can you talk a little bit more about the relationship between architecture and dance? Yeah. Um, so things like what we're doing, finding pathways uh, and a journey to take people down a lot of time in, in architecture, especially if you look at somebody like Frank Lloyd Wright. He's very big on compression and expansion. So each and every one of his buildings, when you go in, the first entryway you have is tiny. And he was a small man, so they're all, you know, like five foot six high. So you would have a hard time in them. You feel very, very compressed. And then you go into the main area, and whether it's the Guggenheim or a house, the main area is always kind of the heart of the building. And usually he has a, a hearth there as well, so that's where the fireplace is and it's huge and ex expansive, but it feels even bigger because you came from this tiny place. So it's about that journey of going through. Um, and dance, I feel like, is often much the same way. You often start off simply, maybe uh -huh. one person, a hand gesture, and then you end in this crescendo of emotion and dance and movement, and you have all these different elements like light, like um, how to take a feeling from someone and represent it in an abstract and larger way that everybody can understand so there's a universality in both of them um, and there's a theatricality in both of them as yeah. well. I love that. And so can you talk about uh, your journey that we did just now? Yeah. yeah. So Well, we start off by the pond, right? By the little fishies. And I don't know if you guys could see them on the, the screen, but uh, that's where I start off was my mind was very much centered on all these little fishies and this little turtle in there too. So really cute. Small area cramped. It's a lot of just figuring out where to put your feet yeah. when you're over there, right? Yeah. You have all these cobblestones and things like that. Then we went up here and we got to like rise up a little bit more. You have a little bit more movement. And then when we came down into this area that we are now, it's just freedom, right? You get to jump, you get to spin, flail your arms as much as you want. And I'm a big mover, yeah. as you can tell from all of my gestures. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's just, it's a really nice feeling to go from trying to figure out how to move and dance to just Freedom. Right. Um, and then, of course, we ended by the willow tree, which brings back all sorts of childhood memories. And it's just lovely, and it's like being hugged by nature. So yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to end. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so for you, when you improvise, can you, um, where does the movement come from, or how do you generate movement? Um, the first place I generate movement is usually music. Mm -hmm. And we have no music here, right. so there's that, that little bit of a challenge. But there is nature, and there's things like that. Um, I try to go with instinct usually. So wherever my weight is taking me, I'll usually go with that and then see if I can keep going in that direction and um, trust 
the weight. Right. So especially when it's something like your head or your hand and it's upside down and just trusting that like it's gonna be all right. right. The, the floor is your partner, you can keep going there. Right. You don't have to always whoo, come completely upright. Right. Um, so trusting things like that I think takes you in interesting places and um, I tend to be a little bit more like staccato. So yeah. that when I when I need to come back to something, it's usually some kind of um, popping, locking, and then seeing where my hands want to take me next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Uh, All right, so um, last question for you. Um, what is dance in your own words? Whoa! Shit. Um, it's really hard because I think that as someone who's very intellectual and like, I used to be extremely academic. I was in architecture. I was a mathematician. Um, dance is basically the opposite of that. Not to say that it is unintellectual, but it is visceral. It is enigmatic. It is the untouchable. It is the intuitive and the thing that it's like the humanity in all of us. Yeah. Yeah, there, I've, I've noticed like in, in asking this question to a lot of people, there's kind of like this correlation between like thinking and, and like not thinking, like shutting off your brain to then like find the dance and find the yeah. feeling and, and let the dance come through. Exactly, because you have to go through this process, right? Every single time, especially if you're learning choreography, mm -hmm. where it's very intellectual, you have to be on top of it, you have to be very, very mental about it, and then you have to let all of that go. Right. And then you find the dance. Right, right. It's so interesting. There's like there's like a balance there that you have to find. I think it was uh, Alonzo King. He said um, that like when you s you're watching a dancer and you can like see them thinking, you almost get worried for them. Like you know, are they are they okay? What's going on? Um, you can like but you can see the thinking. Um, so like learning to shut that off and, and just letting something else take over, be it like the momentum and letting momentum take over. Um, I think that's a very interesting place to find and. Uh, so. It's absolutely when you, when you are truly dancing, you are not inside of your own body. You're expanded outside of it. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you so much, Natalia. Thank you. Um, again, that's pedestrian one of us. Look out for the video. It'll be coming out soon. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>